Domino's is quite possibly the world's most beloved pizza chain. Let me know which one is your favorite, but a couple years ago when I asked that question on this channel's community tab, over 100,000 people voted on it with Domino's emerging as the clear winner. Over the past 15 years or so, it has been a tremendous investment. Their stock price has risen from $3 to $400, meaning if you had bought in at the perfect time right at their low point in 2008, you would have turned $1 into over $100. As of right Right now, they are the undisputed largest pizza chain in the world, surpassing Pizza Hut in terms of sales in 2018 and then surpassing them in number of locations in 2021. There are currently over 20,000 Domino's restaurants in 90 markets around the world that combine to serve over a million customers per day. That is insane. In just about any way you look at it, Domino's has been a remarkable success story, which I think is even more impressive when you consider how much they have struggled to get to this point. My goodness, they have had some major setbacks, so in this video, I am excited to talk about some major rises and falls that they have experienced over the years. There have been a lot of them, so I'm going to get right to it by starting with their first rise and introducing their founder and longtime CEO, Tom Monahan, who I think has an inspirational story. After his father passed away when he was four years old, his mother sent him to an orphanage, and he ultimately grew up in various foster homes. From there, he he joined the Marines for a few years, returned home with aspirations of going to college, but was unable to afford it. In 1960, when he was 23 years old, his brother convinced him to take out a $900 loan and use the money to become 50-50 partners in buying a small local pizza shop near Eastern Michigan University called Dominic's. Yeah, it was Dominic's, and I have to emphasize that this was a small business operated by two young men who didn't really know what they were doing. In fact, after less than a year, his brother wanted out of the partnership so he could pursue his career as a mailman, and all it took to buy him out of his half was an old Volkswagen Beetle that they were using for deliveries. That's funny to think about. At one point, someone sold 50% of this multi-billion dollar company for the price of a used car. As the full owner of Domit Nick's, Monahan opened two more restaurants over the next few years. In 1965, a delivery driver suggested that they change the name to Domino's, and a big reason Monahan was so receptive to it is because he liked the idea of using a domino in their logo. He put three dots on that domino to represent the three restaurants that he had at the time, and then his plan was to add another dot every time he opened a new one. Obviously, he wasn't trying to become a national brand at that point, but two years later, he did start franchising, and by the end of the decade, may have been going a little crazy with it, and that leads me to their first fall. In less than one year, Monahan opened 32 new restaurants, which was insanity. Domino's almost quadrupled in size to 44 locations. Unlike most of his original restaurants, these were mostly franchised and located far away from universities. They weren't getting any customers, but he kept them running by going deeper into debt to a point where he was unable to make his payments and the bank took majority ownership of the company. The bank's recovery plan involved finding cheaper ingredients that clearly didn't attract more customers. It really just aggravated the franchisees to a point where they were filing lawsuits against the company and the whole thing was a disaster. Monahan was able to regain full ownership from the bank simply because it was pretty much worthless at that point, and amazingly, he stuck with it and was able to maneuver his way through the situation and get Domino's back on track. So, the start of their next rise was mostly behind the scenes on the business end, working out deals in court to slowly pay off creditors, making various efforts to repair relationships with franchisees involving new restructured agreements or having them separate from the system. After a year or so, Domino's was in a much more stable condition and ready to start growing again. Though I do want to mention that in the 1970s, the company that made Domino Sugar did file a lawsuit against them claiming trademark infringement for using the Domino name. But after five years, the courts ruled that there was no issue and they can continue using it. The 1980s is when Domino's really started expanding like crazy. They became the fastest growing pizza chain and one of the fastest growing restaurant chains overall. Well under 1,000 locations and 
entering into the decade was over 5,000 by the end of it. Simply put, this is when most people tried Domino's Pizza for the first time, and without a doubt, the single biggest reason behind their breakout success is delivery. I know, that sounds ridiculous today, considering how often we all get food delivered, but Domino's was arguably a big part in popularizing it. Going back to that original location, they would deliver the pizzas around the college campus partially because the building was too small for people to eat inside of it. According to Tom Monahan, delivery at the time was pretty minimal, so I decided to focus on that, and it was the best thing I've done. In the 1980s, they started offering a famous guarantee that said your pizza would be delivered in 30 minutes or less, and to help promote it, they introduced one of the most annoying mascots in television history called the Noid. The idea here was that the Noid would ruin pizzas, he would crush them, or delay the drivers, or make them cold. If you ever had a problem with the way you received your pizza, well, that was the Noid messing with it, but his efforts would never work on a Domino's pizza. To be clear, I do think that this was a great campaign. It really got people talking about Domino's. There were video games with the Noid and action figures. Sure, he was annoying, but that was kind of the point. To summarize here, Domino's was on top of the world in the 1980s, but sadly, it could not maintain that same momentum going into the next decade. By the 1990s, they were losing money and things were really starting to slow down. See, a big part of it was competition from other restaurants that were taking Domino's lead and offering their own delivery service, most notably their biggest competitor, Pizza Hut. They started offering delivery on a large scale in 1986, invested heavily into advertising it, and it sparked a bit of a delivery war between them. By the 1990s, Pizza Hut was responsible for about a quarter of all pizza deliveries, and honestly, the fact that Pizza Hut took so long to start doing it in the first place is likely a big reason that Domino's was able to become so significant during that time. To complicate things, their 30 minutes or less promise had become surprisingly controversial. There were multiple accidents involving Domino's drivers, some of them deadly, so the perception was that these drivers were being reckless in order to get those pizzas delivered on time. One particular accident in 1989 involved a Domino's delivery driver running a red light and hitting a woman who suffered injuries to her head and her spine. Four years later, the court awarded her $78 million, and that was the final straw that motivated Domino's to discontinue their 30 minutes or less guarantee. On top of that, there was a completely separate, frightening incident involving their famous mascot. Yeah, that sounds absurd, but it was serious. In early 1989, a man named Kenneth Lamar Noid had mental health issues where he believed that the whole Noid campaign was created to make fun of him. He thought that Domino's based the character on him and that the commercials were essentially telling people to avoid him. Again, he was mentally unhealthy, so he went into one of the restaurants with a revolver and took two employees hostage for five hours. It was a scary situation that thankfully ended safely. He was sent to a mental health institute for a few months before taking his own life in 1995. The mascot had this negative energy attached to it after that initial incident, and then they stopped using it altogether after what happened in 1995. As if all that wasn't enough, Yet another contributor to Domino's struggles during this time would be the partial exit of Tom Monahan. He had led the company since the beginning, but after having so much success throughout the 1980s, it seems like he was ready to cash out, leave the company, and move on to other things. He had bought the baseball team, the Detroit Tigers, and devoted a lot of time to charitable causes involving the Catholic Church. He is an extremely religious person, so I don't know, it's speculation, but I get the impression that he sort of had one foot out the door and wasn't devoting the same time or passion to the Domino's company that he had been in the past. In 1989, while maintaining complete ownership, he named a new president that took over the management of day-to-day -day activities. He says that he was actively looking for someone to buy the company, and naming a new president was his plan to show potential buyers that Domino's could function without him. Well, the plan backfired because the company wasn't functioning the same without him, and he was unable to find an attractive buyer. You have to admit that Domino's Domino's had a lot of factors piling against them, but were able to make a respectable comeback. I wouldn't say it was anything extravagant, but as time passed, their reputation recovered. Monahan returned to manage the company through most of the decade where he helped improve efficiency before finally selling it all together in 1998 in favor of devoting time to his religion. They started offering menu items that weren't pizza for the first time ever when they introduced breadsticks in 1992 and then chicken wings two years later. They had other successful advertising campaigns and slogans like their
their famous Get the Door, It's Domino's in the early 2000s, again emphasizing the delivery of the pizzas. Everything was back on the rise again, but it didn't last for long. Their next fall occurred toward the second half of the 2000s. Overall sales were down in the US, but I think that the most telling figure here is their change in same store sales. You never want to see a negative number here. It basically means that fewer people were eating at Domino's, considering each comparable restaurant was selling less food than the year before. Obviously, the recession was a factor. Fewer people were spending money and eating at restaurants, but there was a lot more going on here. Part of this decline was due to a crazy video that went viral. I don't even want to show most of it, but there were these two Domino's employees doing gross things to the food and seemingly sending it out to the customers. They later said that it was all a big joke and they weren't sending it to the customers, but my god, this made people apprehensive about going to Domino's and I can't blame them. It's not a pleasant video to watch, but probably the biggest reason behind this fall, ironically, is their emphasis on delivery. I know, it keeps going back to that. 20 or 30 years earlier, it was great for them because that was the thing that made Domino's different. But by 2009, it wasn't all that hard to get pizza delivered, no matter where you called. Instead of focusing on fast pizza, they should have been focusing on tasty pizza because now there were multiple national chains for customers to choose from, all of which had their own unique flavors. The main criticism of Domino's was that their crust tasted like cardboard. Now, you cannot run a successful pizza restaurant if your crust tastes like cardboard. That's practically common sense. So, for the next and final rise, they switched things up when they completely changed the recipe by launching their new and inspired pizza. I am talking about new crust, new cheese, new sauce. It tasted completely different from what they had been serving before. That is a risky move, but they put a lot of time and effort into creating that new recipe, and the consensus seems to be that it was a positive change. Please tell me what you think of it, but most signs indicate that it was a major improvement. I remember the commercials around this time. They stood out to me because they were essentially owning up to their mistakes, openly saying that their pizza was not very good before and that they've changed it. It was strange to see a company putting themselves down in a commercial, but it's a modest quality that people can connect with and it was really impactful. Their CEO said he believed customers had a closer connection with the brand and that connection was helped by social media campaigns. Oddly enough, that gross viral video proved to be a small blessing for Domino's because they created a Twitter account and posted a video in response to the situation and that helped them get on the track of utilizing social media. For example, their Show Us Your Pizza campaign that asked people to take photos of their pizza for a chance to win money. And social media is not the only technology that played a big part in their comeback. Domino's has been pioneering with ordering from your phone and their pizza tracker, both introduced before the new and inspired pizza, but became much more popular after it. Starting in 2012, they phased in a remodeled pizza theater store design where you could see the pizzas being made and a new logo. I like it. It reminds you of the old one, but a cooler, simplified version of it. Their domestic sales quickly started growing to record heights, more than doubling from that point, but maybe most importantly, their same store sales did a complete reversal into the positive, meaning more people started eating pizza from Domino's. It helped catapult them into the number one spot as the world's biggest pizza chain, making this one of the most dramatic comebacks in restaurant history. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about Domino's? How do they compare to Pizza Hut and all the other major chains, and has your opinion of them changed over the years? Also, how do you feel about all of these rises and falls over the years? To me, a lot of these struggles were understandable, or even mostly out of their hands, but even when that was the case, they've always been able to get back up, push forward, and figure out something new. Maybe it sounds funny to say this, but there is a lot to respect about Domino's. So any other thoughts you have about the company or the pizza, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Domino's Pizza delivers. Call now. Thank you for watching.